If you are interested in becoming a civil engineer, then the type of classes you should take in high school typically fall under the categories of math and science. This includes classes such as physics, chemistry, calculus, trigonometry, algebra 2, and others. In college, you would then study civil engineering as your major and take more classes that would establish a solid foundation of the mathematical and scientific principles used in the field of engineering. Typical classes for a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering include multivariate calculus, mechanics and materials, fluid mechanics, structural analysis, and engineering design. To put it briefly, civil engineers create our constructed environment, otherwise known as our infrastructure. Infrastructure is defined as the basic physical and organizational structures and facilities needed for the operation of a society. This includes the home you live in, the roads and bridges you use to get around, the pipe systems that bring you drinking water, and so much more, like airports, tunnels, dams, shipping ports, sewage systems, and energy supply systems. Civil engineers are responsible for designing, constructing, operating, and maintaining all of these things that we depend on every day. So the question was, why is it more expensive to repair something than to replace it fully? Um, a lot of that comes down to time. So when you're building something, there's three main costs. It's going to be material, labor, and equipment. So your labor and equipment is really based on the amount of time it takes to do something. So even though there might be more materials and replacing something fully, if it takes a lot less time, then it ends up being cheaper. There are a lot of great things about civil engineering um, and being a civil engineer. I'm obviously a little biased, but I think my favorite thing is the impact I can have on a large group of people. Uh, take a single project. I'm a bridge engineer. Uh, once it is constructed, thousands of people a day, uh, maybe you know a million people a year, more some circumstances, uh, could use that bridge to get to where they need to go. You know making that large an impact with a single project and then having multiple projects uh, is a thing that's really fairly unique to civil engineering. Hello, what is the hardest engineering discipline of them all? I'm actually gonna tell you what the easiest one is. The easiest one is the one that you love. I love transportation and everything associated with it, so I went that direction and work doesn't feel like a job to me most days. But if I would have went down the structures or water resources direction, it would have been really hard for me to be passionate about it and to enjoy it and to understand all the intricacies um, that are a part of it. If someone's interested in being a civil engineer, I would recommend it. It's a great job. You get to work on a lot of different projects from designing bridges to roadways to traffic signals. And probably the coolest part about it is you get to see your work in real life when it's all done. Um, you know, it, it allows for a great work-life balance. The pay is good and every week can be different work on all different kinds of projects, from big projects to small projects in the cities and in the suburbs. The question is, how do you come up with the ideas for the mechanism or project that you're trying to produce? For me, there are several ways to go about doing this, but one example can be a bicycle trail project. Personally, I enjoy cycling and use my bicycle to commute to and from work every day while not currently under a stay-at-home order. And while doing this, I'm constantly observing my surroundings and thinking of what improvements could be made to make the ride more enjoyable and safe. Then, while working on a bicycle trail project, I draw from this experience while referencing the design codes to try to come up with an innovative solution that I feel will work well.
a famous civil engineering project in Philadelphia that is also relevant to my career as a railroad engineer would be the construction of Amtrak's 30th Street Station. 30th Street Station was opened in 1933 and later rebuilt in 1989. It was built by the Pennsylvania Railroad originally as a two-platform rail station. Today, 30th Street Station has nine island platforms that are served by two main lines of Amtrak. Those lines include the Keystone Line and the Northeast Corridor. 30th Street Station is also served by many lines of SEPTA's Regional Rail, as well as the New Jersey Transit Atlantic City Line. The architectural style of 30th Street Station is classical revival, and this is evident by the ornate columns and decorations throughout the station. Amtrak's 30th Street Station is the third busiest Amtrak station in the United States after Penn Station in New York City and Union Station in Washington, D.C. Overall, 30th Street Station is the 12th busiest station in the United States, with approximately 4 million passengers. 30th Street Station is iconic because it is also the house of multiple SEPTA bus lines, as well as the Megabus, the Bolt Bus, SEPTA Subway, and SEPTA Trolleys. Lastly, 30th Street Station is on the U.S. Registrar of National Places. If you are ever in Philadelphia, I recommend that you take a stroll through 30th Street Station so you can just see the history of the station as well as the great civil engineering structure that it is. The three most common are probably steel, concrete, and lumber. Uh, they make up most of our day-to-day -day infrastructure. For steel, you can have reinforcement bars or rebar. You can have steel beams, angles, or channels. You can even have steel plates that can be protective or be part of the structure itself. For concrete, it can be mixed, poured, and cured on-site or designed and fabricated off-site at a plant and then transported later. For lumber, you often see them in temporary structures or safety devices, but they can also be used as a lightweight building material. Finally, these are just some of the building materials used in construction. Engineers are often using innovative and new technologies and materials, whether in research or on real world projects. As a highway engineer, I work on bridge rehabilitation and preventative maintenance projects, as well as highway reconstruction projects that include roadway widening and interchange redesign.